at the onset of this talk, uh, interview and, and video, I would like to thank Hilary Drysdale, Rupert Fothergill's daughter, for making these videos available for me to see and for all to share uh, and to see, uh, being as they are a few of the original records that still remain of Rhodesia and Zimbabwe's amazing conservation history. Briefly, and to put everybody in the picture, it was Operation Noah that put Rhodesia on the map uh, from a wildlife and a conservation perspective and drew the world's attention to a, a little colony in, 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 in Central Africa that actually very few people knew about. With the passing of time, memories fade, and it's therefore fitting to look back for a short while uh, to a different era and, era and to the men and events of the world's finest conservation agency of its time, an agency that pioneered many of today's African um, and international wildlife strategies and practices. I watched these videos uh, with a great deal of nostalgia, bringing back as they did many memories. I knew Rupert. Rupert was my first warden when I joined the department in 1966. He was a man of, of great inter integrity, but more about him and more about the history of Kariba and uh, Operation Noah later. Of the others that participated, Tom Orford, I knew well, as did I Tinky Haslam. Frank Junar and I spent many hours fishing and talking. Um, he was the biologist, the wildlife, the Department of Wildlife Conservation Department's biologist at the time, and worked alongside uh, Rupert, Tinky, Tommy, and Len Harvey until he was injured, and I mean severely injured by a buffalo, which uh, prevented him continuing with Operation O. But more about these stories later. In closing, Hillary, thank you once again. We are deeply indebted to your kindness and generosity in sharing these videos. December 1958. The last gaps were closing in the wall of the world's mightiest dam, and the flowing power of the great Zambezi River was stemmed forever. Behind the dam, the valley drowned under the captive waters which were to spread and create a lake 280 kilometers long and 40 wide. People had been moved to higher ground many months before, but what do you do about countless thousands of animals? How do you rescue an angry python? How do you handle more than a ton of charging black rhino? Can you catch a bristling, slashing warthog? Can you avoid being cut to ribbons by the scimitar horns of a frightened sable antelope? And how, in heaven's name, do you capture a pride of lions? How could it be done? How could thousands of animals a sizable part of Rhodesia's wildlife heritage be moved to the mainland from the islands which appeared one day only to vanish the next.
deer or leopard, for elephant or tortoise, for bush pig or buffalo, the inevitable answer would be death. As the water backed up higher and higher behind the dam, a small band of men from a base camp set up at Kariba rescued countless birds and reptiles and over 7,000 head of game during five and a half long, weary years. There was always an odd collection of animals in camp, a batch of pythons, accepting their strange surroundings with remarkable tameness. A pair of Goliath heron chicks, rare birds these, and the biggest heron of all. eagles, happily receiving their captors' hospitality until old enough to fly. A foreigner in the camp, Pedro, a South American macaw. He was more than just Rupert Fothergill's pet, for he screeched warning of any camp intruders. Then there were two young kudu antelope does named Bambi and Bully, who delicately, without offending, spent much of their stay helping themselves to the private rations of a young baboon. ammunition. To rescue game you need nets, ropes, traps, cages, boxes, sacks, hypodermic syringes, drugs, darts, food, fuel and maps. The plan of campaign had to be flexible for no one since Noah had ever embarked on such a project before. As the small armada of two large cruisers and five smaller boats nose their way over the flooded valley to the first of a hundred little Temporary island camps were rough pitched, little more than mosquito netted camp beds, with luck under a hastily erected tarpaulin. In the early days, before reinforcements arrived, there were three game rangers assigned to the operation, and their chief was Rupert Fothergill. He had come to Rhodesia as a child, trained and qualified as a fitter and turner, but his love of the bush made him join the game department soon after it was formed in 1952. antelope swimmers, but the great distances of this new environment defeated even the bravest. Bush pigs, like their near relative, the warthog, are fond of wallowing in muddy pools, but neither enjoy swimming. The bush pig's limit is about 200 meters, the warthog's 500. These are potentially dangerous, and even a gentle antelope can pack a nasty punch with its razor-sharp hooves. Although one of the largest antelope, the kudu is normally timid and inoffensive, but, like all the others, reacts violently when cornered. Possible ingredient, web-footed sheepdog, faithful friend of Rupert Fothergill and of the rescue team in general. His inexhaustible energy and foolish disregard for danger earned him his name, Crackers. 
His swimming prowess saved his life on more than one occasion, and his apparent awareness of what was expected of him probably saved many other lives, including this waterbuck doe on the verge of complete collapse. The waterlogged treetops yielded a strange and varied harvest of creatures, and none was too small to qualify for rescue, not even this forlorn chameleon. The monitor lizard, or leguan, is normally quite at home in water, but this was a bit too much. A velvet monkey takes to the water. It can swim fair distances and, incredibly, underwater for about 40 meters without coming up for air. Aspiring to the magician's circle? Perhaps. But this little snake is quite harmless. A leopard, resting exhausted in a tree halfway to the mainland, was darted with a tranquilizer drug and taken the rest of the way by boat. Like all cats, Leopards hate getting wet, although they are fine swimmers. <laughs> A pair of impala rams, as stylish in the water as on land. Challenging crackers, sheepdog skill, they swam off in the wrong direction. came up alongside, and two more animals were saved. Doubtless surprised at his unaccustomed speed, Moving faster in water than he ever did on dry ground, a land tortoise nevertheless must have been grateful for a helping hand. Death by drowning threatened many tiny creatures, but this baby oxpecker, not long hatched, was rescued from the entanglement of a spider's web. The smaller antelope, the dainty Hreisbok, surprised the rangers with their stamina. Swimming steadfastly for up to 600 meters, they fought fiercely when captured. But once caught, they quietened down immediately and reveled in the attention lavished on them. Standing by to shout his instructions from the foredeck, Crackers eagerly anticipate the next adventure. The retiring bushbuck is not often seen, as it's largely nocturnal. Becoming scarce, the Zambezi Valley is one of its last strongholds in Rhodesia. Dense riverine bush is its natural habitat, but with grazing grounds underwater, it was forced into the harsh light of day and unwillingly into the hands of its rescuers. The rangers learned by experience that swimming animals were best approached with the boats in reverse. They were more maneuverable and it was easier to hoist the swimmers from the stern than from the prow. Most of the rescued antelope were in Pala. Although scarce in settled areas, they are widespread in the Zambezi Valley and in the lowlands of Rhodesia.
is slower in its movements in a tree than on the ground, as this moderately venomous, ruthless beet snake discovered. The shrinking islands swarmed with deadly snakes. The treetops were festooned with them. Among the largest antelope is the sable, standing nearly one and a half meters at the shoulder and weighing over 200 kilograms. Both sexes are generously horned, the male more so than the female. The beautiful sable holds a proud place on Rhodesia's national crest. The most dangerous of all antelope, it will stand up to a lion or leopard and give a good account of itself with vicious sweeps of its needle-pointed horns. about the white-tailed mongoose, except that it has a great tenacity for life. Only complete exhaustion would bring one to such apparent tranquility as this. When excited, it growls and barks explosively. So perhaps it was just as well Crackers was busy elsewhere at this time, doing his sheepdog thing. catch was secure. The boats turned to the mainland to release their cargo. chest high water. A swift death on the horns of an animal that will face a lion isn't worth the risk of freeing them on land. In the first six months of Operation Noah, this handful of men had rescued some 1,500 animals. And yet, there were nearly five more years to go. The task had only just begun.